We're here in uh, beautiful Kauai and we have Roy Jarella as our guest. He is a NFL Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers and uh, we're honored to have him here and we just like to ask you a few questions Roy. Um, first one is how did you get started in football? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I grew up in Canada playing soccer and ice hockey and baseball. Baseball up there we call it hardball. Uh, but I was good at all three. And um, ninth grade I uh, moved to the United States with my sister and brother-in-law. At that time who, he was working for the IBM company. And then um, my last years of high school I finished up in Hawaii. Uh, Kalani High School in Honolulu. And um, uh, there's no soccer. Uh, in the high schools at that time. I think it was just starting in the PE classes. And um, so from there, I, uh, in high school, I played defensive back and offensive back, also punted and kicked off straight on. And um, got a football scholarship to New Mexico State. And from there, my brother, who was at Washington State, urged me to go ahead and try kicking a football soccer style when I was a junior. So come my junior year, uh, uh, at New Mexico State, I was uh, d starting uh, uh, safety and um, also punted and then uh, trying soccer style. Um, here I was uh, experimenting with it and the uh, first time I teed the ball up and hit the kickoff, it went line drive out of the end zone, um, but I knew I had something because I, of the power that I had. And so um, uh, that was my start. And then uh, my defense backfield coach said, Roy, you come out to practice a half hour early. And uh, he was Freddie Glick was my coach at that time. And he said, I'll, I'll have some of the older scouts come by and take a look at you uh, next year. So that's why he did. And that's how I got recognized. And uh, uh, I can remember playing against UNM, uh, University of New Mexico up there. And I kicked off very well into the end zone. And, um, punted very well, also started as a defensive back and intercepted a pass and uh, kicked the field goal and uh, so the scouts saw that I was an all-around player. Uh, I can do multiple things and that's what they liked. They liked the fact that not only was I just a kicker but also a, a football player as well. And I got drafted out of uh, New Mexico State in my senior year in the fourth round. First kicker ever chosen uh, in that year and uh, played in the college all-star game as a collegian against the world champion New York Jets and from there uh, I went to the Houston Oilers in the fourth round and then um, uh, my very first game uh, we played that game uh, I think it was Friday night Saturday night we had a, a, a game in the, in the Asher Dome against the Chicago Bears and Gail Sears and Brian Piccolo were back there receiving the, the kickoff and I said, oh my goodness, and Dick Buckus was running in the front row, <laughs> 10 yards away from me. And he was snorting, spitting, kicking the dirt in the turf and telling me, hey, rookie, you're no good. You know, I'm going to break your leg and what the hell you're doing here, you know, da, da, da. And, and I said, oh my goodness, I said, this is what it's all about. And so, and Gail, Gail Sayers was just anxiously waiting for the kickoff. And so I kicked about a yard, two yards deep, and he came right up the middle. I was the last guy left, so I came up there in the in the hole and, and tried to, and I and I dove for him, and then he just had that huge sidestep, and um, I never even touched him, and I rolled over on my back, and there was Phil Galfi, <laughs> still running, uh, I think 103 or 104 yards for a touchdown, and uh, that was the only guy that ever returned the kickoff on me in the NFL. That's awesome. All right, tell us about your Super Bowl experience. Uh, my Super Bowl experiences, uh, I had three, and um, the, you know, the first one I, uh, I led the uh, I was led the league in scoring, uh, won, uh, became All Pro that year, and um, uh, the experience in the Super Bowl, uh, the first one was against Minnesota, and uh, we were a very young team. I think the average age was about 25, 26. Minnesota was very, very experienced with Fran Tarkenton and all the Purple People Leaders at that time. That's what they called them themselves. <clears throat> and um, it was a very tough game. And, and But we managed to to beat them in the old Tulane Stadium. And uh, uh, it was a hard-fought game and uh, gets my extra point. And uh, I think we won by, what, uh, 13 of 7? 
and uh, so that was the first one and, and uh, the experience there was it's a who's who go, who's who bowl because the audience there was the crowd was uh, was all the actors actresses and people from different corporations and companies and and, and their their business people their customers and so uh, the, the crowd was kind of cheering kind of seemed like for both sides and uh, so it, the experience there was the week before uh, all the interviews that you had to do and uh, all the people that came up and asked for autographs um, uh, it, it was kind of a hard to deal with at times but uh, the demand that people placed on you was was awesome was awesome yet tremendous but yet very very tiring and then we had the last two days to ourselves to rest and and to get ready for the game and uh, but you know um, I was happy that I was able to have my mother there for all three so that was nice oh, that's very cool okay so I have a few more questions for you um, <coughs> Tell us what you're doing now. Um, now I'm I'm a head football coach and a teacher at Gadsden High School in uh, Gadsden, New Mexico, um, and uh, also I'm uh, uh, working with uh, alumni football uh, USA um, in New Mexico with uh, Billy Avalos uh, through the state of New Mexico. Also, um, every now and then I'll. Uh, team up with uh, with Bob and uh, uh, see what's going on, see what's happening, and see what kind of potential uh, prospects there are for me down the road. And and uh, talking and dealing with different uh, um, things and deals that maybe perhaps that we can maybe venture into. And uh, but that's uh, that's maybe some short, some intermediate, some long range deal. So uh, and it's a pleasure for me to. Over, th over here to Kauai and um, and and see and live with them for a few days and and to attend this alumni football game that they're putting on here in Lahui. Uh, it's going to be a tremendous game, and I'm all excited about uh, about being there and, and being a part of it. And uh, I think uh, I encourage all high schools uh, if you want a fundraiser, USA football, you know, you've, you've got to get in contact with them because there's money to be made uh, uh, in this football game for high schools. All right, and tell us advice you would give to young kids. You, you work with a lot of high school students, all what, what can you tell us? Well, I think, I think kids kind of sometimes shortchange themselves as far as when they think of a career for themselves or they think that their goals may be too high. Uh, but I can remember uh, in Canada when I was about 11 years old and watching the New York, New York Yankees play on TV. That was my favorite team. And um, I told my mother that one day I'm going to be there playing and you're going to be watching. And uh, she, just <laughs> she just laughed and snickered. But, you know, that's just the way I felt. And uh, I felt like that all the way through. The ninth grade, I can remember uh, the teacher asking us to write on a piece of paper, you know, what do you want to be and why? I said, I want to be a pro athlete uh, because I, you know, I'm good in sports. I love sports and I enjoy it. And I think I'm pretty good at, at, at them all. I just have to pick one and take my course. And of course, he, he read that paper and laughed and, and uh, snickled and I kind of sunk in my chair, red faced and embarrassed. But that didn't stop me because I had that belief in myself that you know it's why not why not you and, and uh, so I, I would tell kids to hey you know set your set your dreams high goals high and um, if you, if you reach them I'm tremendous if you don't reach them you can always come down a notch and coming down a notch is not all that bad but if you don't have any dreams, don't even have any beliefs as to what you want to do or can achieve, um, I think anybody can achieve anything that they want. And um, and I, I would just say, hey, you know, uh, get it, get your high school education, do well in school, and, and um, go to the next level of, of of education, no matter where or what it may be. Uh, and. Um, uh, and keep on on a daily basis, uh, monthly basis, yearly basis. Uh, start striving for your goal. It doesn't. It's, nothing's going to happen overnight. It takes a little time. And if you have patience, if, if you have the belief that you are striving towards your goal, um, let it rip and keep on going.